Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for stopping by. This morning, we are going to be inspecting some of these parts from our latest finishing batch. Uh, I meant to get to this earlier, but uh, we've been a little under the weather here in the shop, and I honestly needed some time to just recover from whatever was going on there. Feeling a lot better this morning and ready to hit it. Uh, so we're going to inspect these parts and look at some other things and talk about some feedback, some of our pricing and things, and just going to ramble for a second. So just strap in here. So jumping right into it, uh, just looking at these up close, we had some vaporized stuff blown off the Modine last night. So just disregard some of these darker spots. Um, it's an industrial environment here. But right here, you can see we have another inclusion. Let me get that to pick that up. Yeah, right there. That nice big hole in the alloy there. So uh, there's another one. Generally, this batch looked a lot better. It was a lot cleaner, but there is still some voids. And then there's this situation. Uh, all the steel was from a different batch, different era than the GSO 5.1s that I showed you previously. Uh, these were ground to a different thickness and a different uh, original stock thickness. So I know this is from a different time. Uh, there's another inclusion. So again, anybody wondering, uh, I'm able to see this just because of our inspection process and my surface prep process here. Uh, this isn't going to be immediately evident to most companies unless your process illustrates these things. Uh, so there's another inclusion, another tiny inclusion there. And this doozy here, uh, that blew out there. That was so obvious when that came loose in the matrix there. So again, that's down in the middle of the sheet. So uh, I'd like somebody to talk to me about that and tell me what, what the warranty policy is on this. Because in my opinion, we should have no failure because of material inconsistencies. And if I see a high percentage of inconsistencies in here where I've got to pick these out to get you guys the best parts, uh, that's not productive to use these type of materials. So uh, as of yet, I've not gotten any straight answers. So we're just going to video everything now and just start putting the pressure on these companies publicly until we come to some sort of resolution. Um, so after looking at that, oh yeah, there's this one S90V. Uh, this was interesting because there's only, let me find it here. It's more dust than, there is this one tiny, tiny little divot thing there. Uh, that's the only inclusion I've seen in this S90V. But what I will say is this material is something I've been lugging around since one of my first service providers I was working with. I forgot I had it. Uh, until they forwarded all my materials to me when I went to work down with Millet. Um, but this is a 2014 era S90V, and it was really nice. Uh, it's, it's very clean. Uh, here, one second, I'll grab a stack here. But I finished tons and tons of parts here. Uh, we're actually, I'll give you a production update. We're done all the GSO3 orders. They're moving through finishing and assembling now. But uh, out of all the parts that I did, uh, that's the only one that I found with a, a tiny little divot. And I mean, that, that's great. That's a really acceptable thing. I don't even think we would see that in finishing and there's no other evidence of anything going on in that material. Uh, so that makes me really, really happy, but I saw it. So I just want to let you guys know, I saw it. Um, now we're going to talk about, uh, some grinding standards and things and where I'm happy with my pricing. And, uh, also there was some confusion. I don't think people, some folks most people get it. Uh, yesterday's video, I said, I'm not a knife company. I'm more of just a, a neurotic guy who surrounded himself with like-minded people to create a high-end manufacturing company that makes knives. So uh, as it relates to my millet era experience here, uh, this is a GSO-6 in the Delta protocol. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it here because they were mostly stoned out. Um, yeah, I don't, it doesn't show up in this light. You can see some of those lines, but even after them having a stoning guy stone the lines out, uh, there was some massive like ripples. There was topography to this. And yeah, you can see some of it in there a little bit. Um, Got to just get that right light angle to come across it. But that's what's visible after a stoning and me doing this aggressive kind of hammer peen peen finish to mask some of that. That's a process I developed early on when we were having grinding issues, like grinding like dressing issues to me and finish issues uh, from our old service provider, Larkin Precision back in the day. Uh, like I said, I think they're doing a better job these days, but uh, this is what I talk about when I say I, I'm not a knife company. This is okay with a knife company. And then as it relates to the grinding strategy overall, uh, this was not an optimal tip for me, but they said that's the best they could do. That's the best we could expect. But 
I could see it in my mind how it was supposed to be and how the machine could move. So we just had to figure out how to make it move that way. So uh, this was the next step in the right direction here. Again, there's still a little bit of that that we were working through, which is why I didn't let this particular one out. Uh, I'm not gonna promise there isn't grind lines. We always have grind lines because it's the panels are ground with abrasive. But when you look at this grinding strategy that we developed later, uh, once I refused that this is the only acceptable standard, our tip profile changed pretty dramatically. So one has a hollowed out tip, one has a tip that I think is ideal. And I'm mad at myself because they had made a lot of parts this way, so I accepted this for a minute, but it did not sit well with me. So we went back to the drawing board and I figured out with Mike how to do that better, uh, which started to see some dissent among the ranks there because I, I don't accept answers that don't make sense to me. Um, so that's one issue. And then uh, we had this come back. Uh, the gentleman really wanted magna cut and he thought there was gonna be a long wait for it, but um, those were starting to ship out until we ran short on good blades, uh, which we've got more working through production now. But uh, I just wanted to explain our grinding standards and where I'm happy with our pricing. So looking at this 3V knife, I got some feedback where he said that the circular lines were a bit coarser on this 3V blade than they were on the Magna Cut blade he got from down at Edgeworks, uh, which he just swapped this for that. But I just want to explain to you guys, like what, I don't know what's going to bother people. So I just try and do the best job overall, but you can see there under the stone wash, there's some grind lines. And for the price point of $239 for this, in this beautiful package, really, really even flat grind. I mean, that's, this is great work, but I need to set an expectation here because I don't find any functional value in trying to sand or stone out tiny, tiny lines under this finish uh, just to increase that any further. It's good, honest grinding. It's even on each of our knives. Uh, some strategies are a little like cleaner than others. It's just to drive this any further, I need better equipment and better software to better control our motion. Um, what I found is, you know, with all of this, these companies are, uh, you know, happy throwing people's lives away doing mindless stuff. And I, I want to just do the best job possible with technologies. You know, this is our current grinding standard on our GSO 4.7. And while you can see some grinding lines, I think this is amazing. You know, it is ground. We use abrasives to grind it, but I'm trying to use technologies to do the best job possible to give you guys a really good user experience as consistently as possible so that you have something you can feel really proud of here and it's it's beautiful but you know i think i'm selling this for 270 ish and then this is 239 and when i say i'm not a a knife company i'm just trying to provide a thing that we've focused on but you know i look at other companies uh you know, where these guys came from, they're still stoning all these out. They have a full stoning department. Sorry about the, the thing over there. And I, I don't like that. Uh, if I can find a better way to do something with technology, I'd rather have people do something more meaningful with their day or we start taking more time off if we can meet our goals uh, in a more efficient manner and not waste our lives doing mundane things that don't make any sense. Uh, I ran into a lot of trouble as an employee of people because they just want strict routine and they're following the status quo. And that's where I'm not a good conformist. I, I, it drives me crazy to waste my, my whole day doing things in the least efficient way because somebody else deemed that's how I should do it. And I, I have better shit to do with my life than to just burn out my time for dollars. So uh, that translates into everything we do here. I'm trying to do the best job possible. I know where this can go but I'm not willing to waste people's lives right now to achieve that standard just to get a, a little more OCD out of that. Um, for, for the price point of our knives, I think we'd put it out an amazing product. And sorry about my palm sweat there. Um, and they're beautiful, they're very highly functional. And with our inspection process, it's something I can 100% believe in, uh, you know, what's leaving our shop. So if I can start pushing some of this further and further with technology eventually, I'll do that. But right now, for the dollar you're spending versus what you're getting here, I am extremely happy with that. So I just wanna set that expectation right here in this video. Uh, we have a very, very, here's another one. We have a very, very consistent standard. And 
you know, sometimes the wheel breaks down a little differently or the grinding strategy is a little different in how it interacts with the material. And just know that's the very best we can do with the technologies and software we have available to us. But I know where it could go. So just wanted to throw that out there and uh, making a couple glamour shots here for a screen grab for this video. But uh, I hope you guys found this video to be informative and uh, hopefully okay to watch. Uh, hopefully these view times get up. I see a lot of people are missing the information uh, just because they can't hang in there. So I'm going to work on that, but uh, you guys have a great day and I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for stopping by.